What's good with YouTube? You already know Big Flacco with a convict's perspective, and I'm going to smash, dash, slide on through with a little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel, and hit that bell notification for future fire content. So, I've been asked this question several times, right? And it was brought up a couple months ago, right, by another channel, Renegade Media, about Skip in the 80s. And other carnales who were basically in uh, what you call A section, which kind of was considered PC in San Quentin at that time, right? Now, is this true? Yes, without a doubt, 100%, it is true. Let me explain something, though. Let's look at the whole situation, though, so you guys get a better understanding. That section was referred to as um, like a PC section for those, right? And what it was was basically a separation from those so they wouldn't go on the yard with yards where the M.A. were fucking deep as hell, right? Not only was Skip on in this section, but so was Tips and a few other C's, right? So my whole question around the whole situation is this. At that time, Skip had just came from YA. He was basically following whatever leadership at that facility was instructing them to do. And see, sometimes in the art of war, there's different things that have been done in the past that maybe today would be frowned upon, right? But I'm going to lace you guys up on, on one thing, right? This is what we used to teach those that were going down south back in the 90s and 2000s. There were several homeboys that were getting sent down to Calipatria, uh, Lancaster, Ironwood, all these facilities. And when they touched down, I know of two individuals personally who got stabbed. Cornell from Bryan Street Locals from San Fran, 22nd. And then uh, Smilone, Smiley from uh, uh, North Highlands, okay? Now, I remember running Fletcher Yards, and I remember one which uh, Derek Goka, Night Owl from fucking Dakota ran, right? And he was 100% accurate when he was asking some of the young soldats that were just getting recruited. There was a few of them that were just getting established as bros. Now, he asked them, what do you do when you get to a southern stronghold to where fucking they're 400 deep and you're the only North Daniel there and they're coming by telling you they're going to kill you and do all this. Some of the soldats were quickly like, oh, I'm going to go out there and just fucking get off and get fucked off. And he'd say, no, why are you going to do that? Right? And he explained to the homeboy, what you do is you basically would stay there for days, lock your door, jam your door so it doesn't open, don't go to fucking child, don't go to any of those things. If they come by asking you if you're going to stay or roll it up, Tell them you're going to roll it up. Get your fucking zipper. Cut that fucking metal rod and metal piece. If it takes a week, two weeks, however long it takes you to make that piece, go out there on your terms because you already know you're stepping into their backyard. And then you're useless if you go out there and fucking get killed trying to act like you're a Billy Badass. And see, that was the whole focus of, of what was being taught to some youngsters when they were getting sent down south because, you know, there's been people who've been killed. There's been fucking people who've been seriously injured. And the whole thing is to come home safely without pulling a cowardice act, but at the same time going out on your terms. And so I'm not saying that is what happened in this situation. Who knows? Eventually, they were, they were back out on those yards and lines. I don't know how bad the situation or circumstances were. Um, you know, there's a chrono and boxers book that DB did the same thing around the same years in San Quentin. So... Maybe this was done for survival. I don't know, right? Maybe this was done, okay, we're going to go out there when we're ready, when we're prepared. That would could possibly be the situation. Now, I'm not sitting there saying it is or isn't. I wasn't there. We're talking 1982 where it was different than what it is today. It was different compared to what it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and even 30 years ago. You got to remember, Skip at that time had not been... They're in the system longer than a year from YA. And you're going to follow what your big homies tell you. And that's, that's my whole focal point about whatever this past incident was. I'm not saying it was the right choice. I'm not saying it was a cowardice choice or if it wasn't a cowardice choice. I don't know the circumstances of how things went further from there. I can see them doing this to plan and prepare to where when they come out, they have the means to fucking go to war instead of just going out there and get slaughtered. Right? There was also a lot of stuff going in with the NF at that time to where people were trying to get to certain yards to hit other people, too. You got to take all that into account, man. So before I put any a label, title, or judgment on it, 
I can't because there could have been an ulterior motive behind what was being done. The purpose maybe was to get to the other side to where they can go ahead and get some of Bobo's people because that was going on as well. People were trying to infiltrate certain yards to, you know, have have each other taken out. There was moves to try to take out Black Bob at that time. So this is all that same time area. There was moves that were being made to try to take out fucking Bobo later on. Then Fig and others that were fucking loyal to the old Bobo faction. And it was going vice versa. And this is where the North Dam started to get involved. So it's easy to sit there and say, oh, that's a coward's act of oh, we'll PC it up or whatever, right? But you don't know the purpose of what they were doing it for, nor do I, right? So I can't say nothing. But there was those that were still going out there to the yard, you know what I'm saying? Um, and getting off. And they were getting off against just not just fucking Southsiders, but in Meadows, you know what I mean? Popeye Baron was on one of those yards at that time. And a whole lot of other cats were there. All, all those fucking OGs that everybody talks about from the Emmy, they were all there in San Quentin around that time. You know, Skip's reign of leadership really didn't start to really take place till maybe 93, 92, maybe. Because I know by 94, he was already, you know, basically teaching a lot of young familianos and recruiting them basically when he was in C4. But at this time here that we're talking about, he didn't have a voice yet within the organization. He was one of the ones that was pushing out the North Daniel bylaws and, and whatnot, along with a few other people. Um, so you really can't hold him accountable for whatever this situation was that happened in 82, because number one, like I said, we don't know what happened. We don't know why they did it. It had to have been a reason strategically because no one got deemed for it. Okay. The second thing, he's a kid that just hit the system. He's going to fall what you call responsible obedience. And what that means is you do whatever your leadership tells you to do. You just don't go rogue and make your own decisions and say, oh, no, fuck that. I'm going to do this. No, because that way you may be jeopardizing other people without realizing you're doing so. Bear in mind, during this time era, you had members from all these organizations that did different things, right? Have skeletons that have been slipped into the rough for whatever reasons. Now, there's always a purpose of why someone is doing something. That's why it's hard for me to sit there and put a label on this whole situation because I don't know. I wasn't privileged to know what was happening back in 82, you know, 83, when all this allegedly transpired. Maybe the leadership there was pulling a cowardice act, or maybe it was a strategic act. We don't know. Look at Chango. There's a video I did on Chango where back in the early 90s, he acted as if he was PC just to get to the yard to hit someone that they wanted to hit on the other yard. Like I said, you never know what the cause and effect of every situation is and why people are doing what they're doing. And that's not to justify it. But that's not to sit there and say it was right or wrong because I don't know what the plan of operations was within that group. There was a lot of stuff going on, not only you know against the oppositions, but there was a serious internal struggle going on, war, a civil war within the NF that was going on right around the same time. You know, those yards at that time, man, they're close, close fucking quarters, man. You go out there and you're only four deep against 50 or 60, you're not coming out of there alive. That's 100% facts. And that could have been taken into the equation of whatever happened at that time. Thing is, I think the majority of those individuals that were in that small quarters right there in, in uh, C-section, they ended up going out to those yards eventually, handling their business, wins, losses, and whatnot. So before I sit there and, and or anybody judges, man, I think it's important that you learn a little bit more of what the purpose is of why they did what they did, you know. Now, I do know within the teachings, because I've taught people this, you go out there on your terms when you're ready. You don't just you don't go to the cops and PC up or do anything like that. If you're in a place down south back in the days, right, or even the oil you wait till you have that piece to come out with and handle your business. Unless there's another fellow soldado who's there with you and decides to go out. You can't leave him hanging. Because back in the days, I'm telling you right now, there was homeboys that landed on these yards. And like they would come up to your fucking cell door talking about they're going to kill you when you come out. And then the homeboys would come out to the yard. And like I said, bam, they would get booked. I mean, I've seen both these individuals got stabbed. Basically, we're fucking... You know, um, their back right there, you know, collapsed lung, got all kinds of situation, man, just for being from up north. That's how it was in the system at that time. P 
people were getting off in R and R ahead of time sometimes to avoid hitting any of the lines or whatnot. Because once they got out there, they already knew you were coming. They were ready for you. And they weren't just trying to do some fucking RP cut and just fucking jump on you like five dudes. They were sending multiple dudes at you, right, with pieces to book you. I mean, homeboys would get rushed to the infirmary in some of these prisons down south with pieces that were still sticking out the side of them. Believe it or not. Crazy ass shit, man. Anyhow, man, you know, that's all I have to add to that, man. Like I said, I'm not going to put no title or label. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it was a cowardice act or maybe it was a plant or whatnot. We were not there. But some of the individuals that were that were in that section, excuse me, I think I said C section. It was A section, which is Alpine section. There must have been a bigger picture to all this. Anyways, I'm waiting. I'm going to be doing another recording with Rojo, man. Um, we're going to be talking about some white factions that in the feds have pretty much um, have relationships with the NF and North and the feds, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm not going to say which groups. We're going to get to it later on. I'll mention those groups. But we're also going to mention about one incident that happened with the AB as well that kind of pushed one of these white groups at odds with the AB. With that said, it's your boy Flacco, Complex Perspective. I hope this answers a lot of questions people have been asking about this incident. That's all I have to say about it. With that said, I'm done. I'm gone. Excuse me.